Okay, guys, uh, let us try to check this question. Uh, this is uh, energy and uh, momentum. All right, November 2023 exam. We just want to check how we're supposed to attempt this question. Yeah, it was uh, just a nice question. As you can see, it was uh, pretty clear. Just that one or two things that we need to consider. And what is it? Let us see our question. Uh, we are given that uh, a body uh, is given here, a body with a mass, all right? So this is a body with a mass of 300 grams. Take note, the mass there is given as 300 grams. But you know that the mass is supposed to give to be given in kilograms. So we divide by a thousand, as we know that in a kilogram, we've got 1,000. 1000 grams so we're going to divide by a thousand these 300 uh, grams that will be 0 0,3 uh, kilograms all right so take note the body of a mass 300 uh, grams is released freely from a height it is released from a height from from a certain point i explained this uh from the previous question that we had if you managed to watch it i explained about uh throwing down uh, something from a certain height or taking something uh, that is a, a, a vertically up, throwing something vertically up, all right, or taking from a certain point going down. All right, I explained this. So this is the, it is, it is released from a height from the top. It is from the top. That is where our object is and it is released down and this height where it is originally situated on top is what 11 meters this is our height which is our distance which is 11 meters above the ground above the ground level all right calculate the following 3.1 the potential energy of the body at the point of re at the point of release when it was released at the point of here initially where it is located so initially, it is above a height of what? 11 meters. And we understand that uh, the potential energy, which can be given as EP, is given as MGH. So that's the mass times uh, the gravitational acceleration, the mass of 0, 0,3 times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times the height above the ground level, which is 11. All right, take note, it's released down. So that's why your gravitational acceleration is just a positive like that. And as you take it above, you just take it as a positive, right? Uh, that's the idea of the potential energy. So this is going to give us uh, 32,34 meters, 34 meters like this. Okay. There is my question because this is the question that I was giving an emphasis. If you check our previous question that we, we, we did, it was dropped from a certain height which is the same thing like this one. They want you to calculate the kinetic energy of the body, six meters. Take note what they're saying, above the ground level. And I said, I'm going to come with a question like that. Okay, now I have that question, which is good. All right, so make sure that you also watch the previous class on uh, energy and momentum, where I explained a different question. They gave us a distance, like uh, when, it, when it has fallen two meters, like it has it is, uh, dropped or when it is at a certain position, uh, it was it was like point B. The point B was two meters uh, below uh, the platform that we were given, if you still remember that question. But this time, they are giving us to calculate the kinetic energy of the body six meters above the ground, meaning to say above, this is our ground level. This is our ground level. This is where it was taken from the top. So six meters above, it means somewhere here. Like here, we have got covered six meters are above the ground level like this. All right. But remember what I said, whether you are given the distance that it is covered uh, above, uh, I mean, uh, from the ground level or not, what is important when you calculate the kinetic energy, it is uh, the displacement, the distance covered, the distance moved. As, uh, remember the, the ball or, or the object here, yeah? we are not told it's the ball or what they just said, a body. It was released freely from a height. It was released from this point. So it is going down. So at this point, let's say this is our A, this is our B at C. So they are simply saying, calculate the kinetic energy at point B because the point B is six meters above the ground level, which is true. 
but how many meters were, were, were covered as it is travel as it is moving down as this object or this body is moving down we want the distance covered why do we want the distance or the displacement covered because it is the one that can give us the velocity we can't calculate the velocity of this because we haven't covered these six meters. If it was the, the condition of uh, the potential energy, remember the potential energy, we talk about the point where you are above the ground level. But in terms of the kinetic energy, we want the distance covered because in that distance, that is where the velocity was. So we need the final velocity at this point. What is the final velocity? Because we know that initially the velocity is what? I explained it there. Initially, the velocity is what? It's zero meters per second because we are going down. It's the opposite of what it is when you're going up. Finally, the final velocity will be zero, which is this one that we are taking as our initial velocity as now it is going down. So we want to know what is going to be the ending velocity so that we use this velocity to calculate what uh, the kinetic energy. As we know that uh, the kinetic energy is given by what? We know that I explained this, guys. Uh, I'm not going to take time here. Uh, 3.2, I say the kinetic energy is given by half mv squared. So we need the velocity there. So that is why we are talking about the displacement. All right, that was covered here. All right, so how many meters were covered? From 11, we just subtract the six meters above the ground level. So 11 minus what? Minus six is going to be five meters. So it means here there is five meters which was covered. So the object has traveled for what? He has traveled for five meters from a velocity of zero meters per second to a velocity of what we do not know. But what we know is that the gravitational acceleration there is 9.8 meters per square second. And I, I talked about this uh, issue of the gravitational acceleration, if you still remember, I talked about the issue of the gravitational acceleration to say whenever you are going down, you are moving straight in that gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be taken as a positive. I mean, as a positive. As you are going up, it's a negative because it's being opposed. Okay. Then I also explained about this formula to calculate V from V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS, which is given as what? As 2GS because you are now talking of what? The gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be 2GS. And since u is equal to zero, we are going to be left with the v squared equal to, do, uh, to two gs. So it follows that v is going to be the square root of two gs. I talked about this formula and I said, this one, you need also to know it by heart, but if not, then take it this one, just substitute u is zero, just substitute direct. You are still gonna get the same v as this one that we are going to take even if you use this formula that V is equal to the square root of 2GS. That is two times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times S, which is the displacement taken from this point covered from where it was up to where it is. Remember, it is six meters above. It's at this point, but it is not covered. It is above. It is six meters above. It is not covered, this six meters. It covered five meters. So that is our displacement, which is five. All right, which is this S. So that is the most important part. So our V, which is the velocity, is going to be the square root of, uh, if you simplify this here, it's going to be 98. So it is the square root of 98 as a decimal. That's 9,899, something like that, meters per, se per meters per second. All right. But since I want exact values, you are the one we are, you are calculating. You can just take this V as the square root of 98. Don't simplify it. Just put it here. EK which is our kinetic energy is going to be a uh, half of the mass here. The mass is supposed to be in what? In kilograms. So this mass that we are seeing is supposed to be in kilograms. That is why we have to convert our given mass here to be in kilograms. That's 0, 0,3. So we've got 0, 0,3 kilograms times the velocity squared. So like I said, yes, you can take the decimal, but uh, just for me, I'm just going to take this one because it's going to give me exact values. V is equal to square root of 98, but it's a V squared. So V squared like this. So this one is going to give us exact, exact, exact value, which is a uh, 14,7 joules. All right. So that is our kinetic energy at that moment. That is the kinetic energy at that moment. So the kinetic energy is determined by the, velo by the velocity. 
but that velocity is supposed to be the final velocity over the distance covered, the displacement covered. So that's why this S is supposed to be the one covered from where the point was. The point was here. Now it's at point B. It has covered how many meters up to B? Five meters. This six meters, it has not covered this. It's above the six meters. It's on top of the six meters. It has not covered this. Okay. Then uh, let's check the other part here. 3.2, the time taken to hit the ground uh, from initial conditions, from initial condition, from the first point here, initially, our U is equal to what? Our U is equal to zero meters per second. That is initially. All right. So we need the time that was taken to hit the ground. While least we know that 3.2, uh, 3.3, uh, 3 we know that U is equal to, we started at zero there. That is what we understand. We started at what? At zero. So U is equal to zero meters per second, right? So to hit the ground, it means what? What does it mean to hit the ground? It means we have covered the wall of the distance, the displacement of 11 meters, the height of 11 meters has been covered. So our S is going to be given as 11 meters there. Okay, so we've got two ways that we can actually use this to calculate, uh, to calculate this time. There are two ways. Okay, remember from this formula, uh, we can calculate V from this. We can calculate V. We know that G is equal to 9,8. And we've got this formula. V is equal to U plus A T. But our A, which is our acceleration, is the gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be G T squared. Instead of A T squared, it's going to be G T squared. But as we know that V, uh, this U here is equal to what? The U is equal to, to zero. So what does it mean? We can play around with this formula here and make, uh, guys, where am I getting the GT squared? It's V is equal to U plus 80. Is it? Is it? That's V is equal to U plus 80. Sorry for that. V is equal to U plus 80. Not 80 squared, but 80. 80. So it's going to be GT. Sorry for that, guys. Can you correct this? Please, can you properly correct this? V is equal to U plus 80. This is the one that we are taking, this one. So like I was saying, the U is equal to zero. So we can make uh, T the subject, but we need V first. From where? V, I said, the final velocity always you go back here. This is where you get the final velocity. The square root of 2GS, because U is equal to zero. So you're gonna, back, you're gonna go back to the square root of what? 2GS. So from this formula, we are going to calculate V first. So V is the square root of 2GS, as we stated before. Since V is equal to the square root of 2GS, it means V is equal to the square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times S. This time is the whole displacement taken, the whole distance covered, which is 11 meters. So this is going to give us V. Uh, that is the idea of the question there. So that was going to be something like 14, comma, uh, 683, something like that, meters per second. So that's our V. So with this, we can calculate T since V is equal to this. So V is 14, comma, uh, let's just write in this one. Uh, 14, comma, 683 is equal to, remember we said U initially is going to be at zero plus GT 9, comma, 8 times T. So you're going to calculate the time that we want. So that's 14,683 is equal to zero plus anything. It's just going to remain that part as it is. Then we divide by 9,8, uh, by 9,8 both sides. This is going to give us the exact value of T, which is the time. And that is going to be something like 1,48, uh, 1,982, uh, something like that. So it's going to be 98 in seconds, right? That is our time in seconds. But... um. We have so many ways, like I said, uh, what about this formula here? Because we have got the displacement. Uh, let us just remove this. We have done, we are done with this part, isn't it? Do not need this one. So I'm just gonna explain also from this formula. I talked about this formula previously. I talked about this formula. Uh, I think we talked about, uh, but I, we, we had this formula. Remember we said S is equal to UT plus half a t squared. There is also a t there, but 
A is the, uh, uh, the gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be uh, plus half gt squared, like that, all right? Since uh, this is equal to zero, the u is equal to zero, this part is not there because u times anything, zero times anything, guys, that's a zero. Then. Zero times that, and it's going to be a zero. So you're going to be left with this. S is equal to half gt squared. Let us make t the subject here uh, so that we can just substitute, all right? So you can make t the subject. How are we going to make t the subject? This is same as over one. So cross multiply. That's two times s. 2s is equal to 1 times 1 gt squared. That is going to be gt squared. So we can divide by g by g like this. So to find t, we're going to introduce the square root to remove the square that we see here. So t is going to be equal to the square root of this. Here we introduce the square root. It removes the square. But this side is going to remain with the square root. So it's going to be 2s over g. All right, so this is the formula that we can just use uh, to find our t. So therefore, it follows that our t is going to be the square root of 2 times s, which is the whole displacement, the whole distance covered, which is our s there, the wall up to the ground. It's 11 meters over g. That's 9,8. So this is going to give us t. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. That's the idea. All right, that's the idea. Or we can um, even substitute here. We can even make substitutions, but it's up to you. So this is going to give us something like uh, 1,49829, something like that. So T is going to be 1,498 in seconds. All right, so that's the time in what? In, in, in seconds. So you see, guys, it's a play around of, it's a play around of case of a topic, I mean, uh, of formulas. You have to learn to manipulate your formula to the way that you want to have it, the way that you understand it. If you've got any other way that you can manipulate these formulas, let us know on the comment section so that we can bring those ideas. You can also come to my WhatsApp so that we talk about those methods so that we can present those methods uh, and also will be able to mention your name uh, due to that method that you've presented so that it can also help us and also clarity to yourself if you are using a certain method and you want clarity to that it can be of advantage so let us know in the comment section from Amazon African Motives till we meet again